Hey there, and welcome back. Really excited about the video I've got in the works here for you is this direct result of the peer pressure I've received from many of you in comments on previous videos and through Instagram messages. Now from what you're saying, six arc is the caliber to be shooting out to intermediate distances. So I decided I had to find out for myself and I built this upper. So what I wanna do in this video is run through my initial experiences with the caliber and then at the end, give you my thoughts on how it performs. So while I do that, I'd love to hear in the comments your experiences if you're shooting six arc. How far have you been able to consistently push the round? Is it living up to your expectations or is it something maybe that's a little bit overhyped? I'd love to hear it. I can't wait to find out what it's all about. I'm really hoping to have a consistent 1000 yard performer out of this 14 and a half inch upper. So really curious to see if it's gonna be capable of doing that. Now what we're gonna do in this video is move down to 100 yards, give you a look at accuracy performance out of a couple of factory loads, then push out on steel and see how far we can make consistent hits using this setup. Also, I'm gonna give you a close-up look at the build and why I chose many of the components that I did on the upper. So if you like the sounds of that, I hope you'll stick around. This is gonna be a super fun video and I hope you'll join me. So let's get to it. Really quick before we start shooting, Let's talk about the gear we're gonna run in this video. Now I'm really excited about how this upper came together. So I wanna run through each component that I put on it and why I chose that component. So to start with the lower is my Knight's SR15 SBR lower. You've seen it in many previous videos and it runs the Knight's two stage trigger. For an upper, I used a BCM upper. Charging handle is the Geisley. And then rail is the Daniel Defense Riz 3. So, I've always kind of been a fan of the Daniel Defense rail. I always love the look of the Riz 2, kind of that SOP mod block 2 type configuration. And I felt like the Riz 3 would be something fun to try on this upper. It's a little bit thinner profile than the Riz 2. It's got the M-lock slots, and I think it looks great. And that's half of the battle, right? So the important components though would be the barrel and the bolt carrier group. So the bolt carrier group and the barrel both came from Faxon. So these are components that I found online. They were in stock, so I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger. Really wasn't familiar with Faxon before I started this project. So bolt carrier group was beautiful machining, very nice component, and the barrel was priced very well. So what is the barrel? It's a 14 and a half inch barrel, carbine link gas system, and it's one in eight twist. I was a little bit nervous about the one in eight twist. That seems maybe a little bit slow for some of the heavier bullets, but what we're gonna see in this video, I think, is it's gonna shoot just fine with the 105s and the 108s that I've purchased for us to shoot. Now this barrel, 14 and a half inch, many of you are probably gonna light up the comments saying I should have gone with a longer barrel, more barrel, more velocity, better performance out at distance, and you're right, I'm not gonna argue any of that. But when I was thinking about what I wanted this setup to be, I wanted this rifle to be a handy rifle, able to shoot quickly and effectively up close, but then push out to distance with more consistency and a little bit easier than 308 and 556. So what I think I'm going to do, and you'll have to let me know in the comments if you want to see it, but I think I'm going to compare this 14 and a half inch six arc barrel to 556, 308, so that we can get a true comparison side by side of how they stack up. When I ran the numbers through my shooter app, what I'm seeing is this 14 and a half inch six arc barrel shooting the 105 or the 108 is going to outperform a longer barrel 5.56 and a longer barrel 308 out to 1,000 yards. Now certainly the proof will be in the pudding. It's something we can do. Let me know if you want to see it. So I wanted to keep this thing handy but effective out at distance. For a suppressor, it's my Surefire SOCOM 762 Mini. You've seen it many times on the channel. It's great. I love how versatile it is. Is it the quietest? I don't know. It doesn't really matter to me. It's easy to mount and it works well. So that's what we're going to run. For an optics package, I've got a spur mount with a Night Force Attacker F1 4 to 16 with a Trimmer 3 reticle. Again, it's a scope you've seen many times on the channel. I love that Trimmer 3, and I felt like the 4 to 16 was a nice balance between size and weight and magnification range to push out to distance. And then finally, on top, I've got the Wilcox Raptor, and I'll use this because I am going to send some rounds after dark, and this thing is awesome for ranging and IR illumination, etc. So. That's the rifle and optics setup. What are we gonna run for ammunition? So I've got a couple different factory loads. The primary load I'm gonna run in this video is the Hornady Match 108 ELDM factory load. 
We'll shoot this at 100 and get it chronographed. And then also, I've got the Hornady Black 105 BTHP. And again, we'll shoot it at 100, get a chronograph reading. And I don't know that I'll shoot much of this in the video. I might shoot a little bit for comparison's sake, but the bulk of what I want to shoot is the 108 to see how it performs out of this one and eight barrel and hopefully out to a thousand yards. So from here, let's move down and hit the range. A hundred yards coming up. So let's knock out some hundred yard groups. First up, I'm going to run the Hornady Black 105 boat tail hollow point. I'm going to put those on the bottom dot out there at a hundred yards. So Let's see how it'll do. If you remember, I chronographed these just a minute ago, and these are running right at 2511 for an average. Wow. Beautiful group out there. I believe they're all in one hole, so very solid performance. I do need to bump that to the right, probably two tenths, but I'm not going to make a change until after I shoot the 108. So let's do that now. Now I've got five rounds of the 108 ELD Horn of the Match loaded up. Let's put those on the top dot at 100 yards. When I chronograph these, they're running right at 2477 for an average. It's a little bit slower than the 105s, but that's to be expected. So, how do they group? Again, I have not made any adjustments to point of impact from the 105, so we'll see exactly where these land and adjust from there. Uh oh, I dropped a little low. So, I believe that's a really nice group. One flyer dropped a little bit low. Let's take a close-up look, and then I think I will adjust, given both groups are just a little bit to the left. I'm going to come to the right, two-tenths before we shoot steel. So let's take a close-up look there at 100. So here's a close-up look at our target. We just shot at 100 yards. In summary, I'm super excited about the accuracy we're seeing. So first we put five rounds of the 105 boat tail hollow point down here. And then we moved up and put eight rounds of the 108 ELDM up here. So these five rounds right here are absolutely tiny. Call it right at a half inch of horizontal spread. So 0.5 MOA, beautiful group. Then I shot the five rounds of the 108 and it measures I call it just under an inch, one MOA in total. And the one round dropped a little bit low there. Maybe it was me. Doesn't really matter. The bulk of that group is solid. So I believe a really nice shooter out of that 14 and a half inch Faxon barrel. From here, I'm going to adjust my point of impact to the right two tenths and call that zero before we go shoot steel. So let's push this thing out to distance and see how she does. We've got an absolutely beautiful evening to put our first rounds on steel out at distance with the six arc. So first up, let's shoot the 108 ELDM 10 inch plate, 537 yards. Now my app calls for four mils of elevation. So I'm gonna hold that in the reticle. And then for windage, it's extremely calm with a slight left to right. So I'm just gonna hold left edge of plate and see where we're at. Four mils, left edge. Impact on the left edge. So let's go dead center. Wow, really easy, five for five there at 500 yards with a first round impact. So from there, let's push out to a two third Zipsic at 830 yards. For that, my elevation is calling for 8.3. So here we go.
So I've loaded up five more rounds. We have the two-third Zipsic down there at 830 yards. Let's go ahead and dial up 8.3 mils. And I have the GoPro running on this target, so you should get a little better view. Scope's on 13 power. And what do you say? We go dead on for windage. Had to have been a T-post hit, the way that reacted. I'm going to come up just a hair. Off the left edge, I had quite a bit of mirage. I'm up a tenth. Pack. Impact. So those last three rounds landed pretty much dead on. Elevation at 8.4. Let's push further. I really like what we're seeing out of this rig so far. Let's push a little bit further. I've got a full-size Ipsic out there at 1,020, and I've got 10 rounds loaded up. According to my app, we're going to need 12 mils of elevation, so I'm going to go ahead and dial that on. And then, just like before, I'm going to hold dead center on the windage. So something like that on the bipod. Scope is still set to 13 power. It's getting a little bit dark, but maybe we can see what we're doing. Let's just go dead on at 12 mils. All right, so that landed off the right edge about, call it a half. Good elevation. impact. Second round. My bipod's sinking in. Alright, so we were, call it four tenths to a half left. Impact. Ooh, off the right edge. We'll go to six tenths. Wow, what a run at 1,020. I think we had two misses. That's awesome. I think we'll try to keep pushing further, but really happy with the performance we've seen out of this 14 and a half inch barrel all the way out to 1,000 yards. And given how well it's performing, I want to push further. So I've set my full size Ipsic up out there at about 1,250 yards. So what I want to do right here is just range this quick to show you the Raptar. Remember, I zero my Raptars five mils below. So I'll put the five mil mark on the target. 1,252 yards. 
With the 108 ELDM, I know that's 17.8 mils of elevation, so I'll dial that on. And we will go ahead and put our first round at 1,250 yards. Now, according to the app, this 108 is going subsonic about 1,100, so this is going to get pretty sporty, but, and of course, my target is right there at the edge of the shade, so that won't do us any favors. Slight left to right here. I'm going to start a half left. Might need more wind. We'll call that about, what do you say, 1.4? A little bit more. Call it 1.75. Just off that edge. I'm going to 2. Impact. Impact. Off the left edge. Step back just a bit. I believe that was also off the left edge. So to 1.75. Dropped low. Impact. Wow, that's wild. 1,250 yards. I believe I got four impacts out of 10 rounds, which is not terrible. It's better than I expected. So that's a ton of fun. From here, let's wrap it up. So I'm out here tonight actually waiting on the northern lights. We're supposed to be able to see them here in Washington really well. But while we wait, why don't we put some rounds through the six arc after dark with the PVS 30 and the Wilcox Raptor. So I'm gonna run the illuminator on the Raptor. It's a little bit dark out here. This will allow you to see the target as well as me. Let me find the target, there it is. So I've got the two thirds Zipsic out there at 540 yards. We have a right to left wind now. It's changed from the daytime. So I'm gonna favor right probably to that four mile an hour wind dot. Four mils. Man, this thing is fun. Just no recoil, shoots really well off this tripod. Ton of fun, making easy work right there at that two-thirds Zipsic, 540 yards. So that's going to wrap up the shooting portion of this video. From here, let's move into a quick summary and talk about how the upper shot, and then I'll give you my thoughts around my experiences running this upper for the first time. So out of the gate, we moved down to 100 yards and we shot a couple of groups. The 105 boat tail hollow point shot a beautiful group at a half inch, and the 108 did very respectable at roughly one inch, and one of those rounds was a flyer. So very happy with the factory loads from an accuracy perspective, especially for the first rounds through the barrel. Not that impressed with the velocity consistency out of either load. An SD in the 20 range isn't that great. It makes it challenging to connect consistently out at distance. Really would like to see an SD at minimum in the low teens or even in the single digits if possible. So from here, I do want to hand load and see if I can improve that. But as you saw in the video, we still made plenty of hits. After shooting at 100 yards, we pushed out on steel at 540 yards where we had no problem connecting with a 10 inch plate. 
We went five for five at four mils of elevation. So really impressed with that performance, a little bit of wind, but nothing that the six arc couldn't handle. So great shooter there. Then we pushed out to 830 yards where I missed with the first two rounds and then connected with the last three. Again, really happy with that performance on a two thirds Ipsic. That's not an easy shot. And you think about a DMR rifle, that's probably about the max distance where you would really employ a setup like this. So great performance out to 830 yards on a two-thirds Ipsic. From there, I was feeling good about the performance we were seeing. We pushed out to 1,020 yards on a full-size Ipsic. This is where I started to get super impressed with this setup. At 1,020, we made eight impacts out of 10 rounds fired on a full-size Ipsic. That is awesome. That's the furthest I've made consistent impacts with the shortest barrel I've shot, if that makes sense. So short barrel out of the thousand yards, very consistent. And that's what I was hoping to get out of this upper. I believe we proved it's very possible. And we were in the range of something like 12.3 mils with that 108 ELDM. So really solid performance. Then we pushed out a little bit further to 1,250 yards where we made some more impacts. Now here you saw me shoot two different types of ammunition. With the 108 ELDM, we connected four out of 10 times, which I believe is very respectable given, according to my calculator, the round was going subsonic out there. The Hornady Black, the 105 BTHP, we had a little bit of trouble. I only connected two out of 10 times, and what I found is the actual drop of the bullet was more than the calculator called for, so I need to go in and clean up my BC and try to correct that if possible. But really happy with the performance of this rifle, really with both of these rounds, but especially with the 108 ELDM, out to a thousand or even call it 1250 yards really awesome for such a short barrel now my opinion of this i am super pumped about this upper this thing is very easy to shoot it's light recoiling as you saw on the scope cam it doesn't move off target there's barely any movement it's really easy to send those follow-up shots you saw the footage where i shot at night 540 yards no problems off the tripod. It barely moves. This thing is an absolute laser. I love the energy that it puts on target. It's enough bullet there out at distance that I can see my splash if I miss, or I can see the plate move if I make an impact, and that's a must for long range shooting. So, so far, my initial impressions, I'm super pumped about this upper. I believe it's more than just hype. I'm kind of bummed I didn't buy into this sooner, and I thank each of you that commented on the video telling me to give it a try. So from here, that said, I would love to hear your comments. What did you think about the performance of this upper? What do you want to see me do next with this upper? Should we run it side by side with a 5.56 or a 308 or a 6.5 Creedmoor? We can do any of that. Just let me know. I know what I want to try to do. I want to keep making content because I love shooting this upper. It's a ton of fun. And if you stick around, you're going to see it more on the channel. Now that said, I'm really trying to grow this channel. We've seen a ton of growth recently, and I'm very happy and thankful for that. How can you help me grow? It's your interaction. If you like this content, subscribe to my channel. There's a ton more in the works just like this. Comment or like the video. Anything you can do to interact is going to help me grow and increase my reach here on YouTube. And then finally, check me out on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. If you like this kind of content, I hope you'll stick around because I've got a bunch more in the works. Much of it will include the six arc upper because I am now a fan.